Hello everyone, this is Mr. Slomka again, and I am continuing to talk to you about uh, creation of the unit circle. This is going to be video three of five on this topic. And so this video right here is going to help us collect our last element that we want to add to our tool, our unit circle tool. So, so far what we have done is we've collected degree values that we thought were very important, and we've also started to collect some ordered pairs that we thought were very important as well. The last thing that I would like to add for you is something that uh, Mr. Law, he did introduce to you, which is going to be the idea of a radian. A radian is very similar to a degree value, it's just measured in a different unit, and those units pop up sometimes, like in our shortcut R length and sector area formulas. So we want to make sure that we have easy access to them as well, so that would be really great to have them on our unit circle. So what I've done right here is I have some circles right here with the, the two sets of important degree values, and what I like is I'd like to have every one of these degree values matched up with its radian value. So let's talk about that. Hopefully some of them are starting to feel a little bit familiar to you. So 45 degrees, 30 degrees, 60 degrees, maybe you're starting to know what those radian values are. And if you are, are currently mumbling those under your breath, excellent, great job. That's exactly what I would want for you. Um, but if you're not, then there's always a really great conversion trick. So please remember that if you're ever starting with a degree value and you want to convert to radians, all you need to do is you need to take your degree value and you need to multiply by pi over 180. And every time you do this, you will get the radian value. And that's what I'm asking for. So let's start with 45 degrees. If I take 45 degrees and I multiply it by pi over 180, um, what's going to end up happening here is that I'm going to build a new fraction. And this new fraction is going to contain the 45 and the pi and the 180. Now it's a big, ugly fraction. It certainly is. And so it would be great to reduce it. We're not going to be able to reduce the pi, so we'll leave that alone. But 45 over 180 reduces, and the best common factor for those guys is actually 45. 45 times 1 is 45, and 45 times 4 is 180, which means that pi over 4 is the same as 45 degrees. Fantastic. Okay, so now if you were thinking to yourself, that was a little lengthy, I don't think I want to do it so many times, I agree with you. So down here at the bottom of the page, what I have is I have a couple of fun facts that will help speed this process up, so we don't have to do this so many times, because I really don't want to. So let's talk about radians for a quick second, and I'm sure that all of this information has been presented to you already, but I just want to make sure that we're clear on it, and revisiting it, it will just strengthen that for you. So let's talk about radians. The first thing that I want you to understand is that the main pillar that we are going to be leaning on is this fact right here. I need you to make sure that you know this one forwards and backwards without hesitation and you never forget it. And that is going to be this, that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. That is the main fact that you have got to remember. That fact right there is what our whole conversion technique is based around. You'll notice that I use pi and 180 up here together, and that's because they are equivalent to each other. Okay, so now once you have that fact, though, you can leverage it, and you can use it in a whole bunch of different ways. Like, let's talk about 360. 360 is the equivalent to 180 degrees plus another 180 degrees. So if you wanted the radian value, what you could do is you could say, okay, I know each 180 is the equivalent to a pi, and so now I know that what I'm really doing here for my radian value is just pi plus pi, or 2 pi. Now that's something that you can do very quickly in your head. You don't have to reduce fractions or anything. It goes very smoothly. So that is a great thing that you can use. We've leveraged this fact to get a new fact without having to work very hard and not using any fractions. Let's do another one. Um, 180 can also be reduced. I know off the top of my head that 90 degrees is half as big as 180, and you probably do too. And so if you also know that 180 is the same as pi radians, then what you can also say is, okay, instead of 180 over 2, let's make it pi over 2. And this is true. Every time you have a 90 degrees, it is equivalent to pi over 2 radians. So that's fantastic. And in fact, if you take a look up here, you'll notice that that's actually part of some of our circles. 90 degrees is labeled on both of these, so we can now go in, and without having to do any converting, we now know that 90 degrees is now pi over 2. Fantastic. Let's do another couple. 
So now the numbers 45 and 30 and 60, one of the reasons that they are so special is because they're also related to 180 degrees. And so you can do the same kinds of things we did with our 90. How do you take a 180 and you reduce it down to a 45? That's simple. You divide it by 4. And that means that 45 degrees is also pi over 4. Fantastic. How do you take a 180 and you uh, reduce it down to a 30? That's easy. You divide it by 6. And that means that 30 degrees is the same as pi over 6. And lastly, how do you take a 180 and reduce it down to a 60? That's also simple. You divide it by 3. And that means that 60 degrees is the same as pi over 3. Now that you've done this work right here, and you can work that logic and leverage it, what you're going to be able to do is you're going to be able to fill in these radian values very quickly and easily, which is fantastic and wonderful. Um, so I now know, once again, that uh, 45 degrees is pi over 4. I know that 180 degrees is pi. I know that 30 degrees right here is going to be pi over 6. And I know that 60 degrees right here is pi over 3. So I've gotten all these pieces of information that's going to go really, really nicely. But that still ha doesn't help me with some of these other ones. And so there are some other tricks that you can use in order to help you out with that. Um, so let's talk about those for a couple seconds. So here's a, another trick for you. Let's pretend that what we're looking at right here, instead of, is a cir instead of a circle, let's pretend that it's a pizza. So right here, what I notice is that for the top of my pizza right here, I got to pi. Get it? A pizza pie. And so what you might notice is that my pizza pie that I have here, I've cut it into one, two, three, four slices. Now that's not a very big surprise to me. Because if you take a look, my denominator right down here is 4. This was 1 fourth of my pizza pie. It was 1 fourth of my pizza pie. And so that guy is, is, is not a shock. Uh, the second one right here looks a little confusing, but let's clear that up. If we were uh, going to eat this slice of pizza and this slice of pizza, that would be 1 2. That would be 2 fourths of my pizza pie. Now, 2 fourths right there is a great fraction, but it can be reduced. And when it does reduce, it reduces down to 1 over 2, which is the exact same fraction that I had right here. Now, this guy right here, 135, that would be 1, 2, 3 slices of my pizza pie. So that would be 3 pi over 4. Now, that one does not need to be reduced. So we can just leave it as 3 pi over 4. This guy over here, that would be one slice, two slice, three slice. That would be four slices. That would be four pi over four. And that one reduces. It reduces down to pi. Let's keep counting, though. So this is a really, really great trick, and it's going to help us count through this really, really quickly. We were up to one, two, three, four. The next one right down here would be five pi over four. Excellent. And let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five. This one right here should be six pi over four. Awesome. So now that one you probably can reduce. Uh, six over four reduces down to three pi over two. Let's keep going. One, two, three, four, five, six. That one right there is seven pi over four. And our last one is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight pi over four. Now, please remember that one can reduce as well. And this one should not be a surprise to you. 360 degrees, one full trip, is something that we had talked about earlier. 360 degrees is going to be the same as the reduced fraction. And it's going to be 2 pi. So now we've got all these radian values, and we haven't had to do a lot of converting, which is fantastic. You can convert. By all means, feel free to for the first couple days. But I need you to try to get speedy with this. So this is a speedy trick that's going to help you get through that information very quickly. Let's take a look at my second pizza. So right over here, I already know that 180 degrees is the same as pi radians. And so my pizza pie now has more slices, but they're smaller. So now how many slices do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six slices. We have six slices, which means, uh, not surprisingly, that our denominators are going to be over six, just like our first one right here. So because of that, we're going to be counting over 6. So this is going to be 1 over 6, which we already have. This one right here would be 2 pi over 6, but that reduced. 2 pi over 6 reduced down to 1 pi over 3. This one right here, this is 1, 2, 3 pi over 6, and that one reduces. 
Now you might say, hey, Mr. Slamka, we already saw 90 degrees over here. Wasn't it 2 pi over 4 before? And the answer was yes. Yes, it is. So now if you take a look, 2 pi over 4 reduces and 3 pi over 6 reduces, and they give you the exact same result. So it doesn't matter if you think about it as 2 pi over 4 or you think about it as 3 pi over 6. In fact, I encourage you to think about it both ways. Uh, let's keep going, though. So we were up to 1, 2, 3. The next one would be 4 pi over 6, and that one reduces. That one's going to be 2 pi over 3. Then the next one will be 5 pi over 6, and that one is reduced. Next one, 6 pi over 6. So now this one's a really critical one. Now we had already filled that one in. We knew it was pi, but it is important that you get this one down as 6 pi over 6, because I don't want you to skip it. Because I, I need you to remember that this guy right down here, the next one that we're going to do is actually 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That one's 7 pi over 6. So you can't skip to go to 6 pi over 6 down here. This one should be 8 pi over 6. But that can be reduced, so we're going to reduce our 8 pi over 6. 4 pi over 3. Then the next one would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. This is 9 pi over 6. Once again, you might say, hey, Mr. Sumpka, the last time 270 degrees is 6 pi over 4, and now you're telling me it's 9 pi over 6? And the answer is it's both. And the reason that it's both is because 9 pi over 6 reduces down to the same thing 6 pi over 4 does. That is going to be 3 pi over 2. Uh, both of these are special triangles. Both of them have 90 degree angles, and so they're going to be having those 90s, those 180s, and those 270s, and they're going to be all very much the same. Let's keep going, though. Our next one, we're almost done. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 pi over 6. 10 pi over 6 needs to reduce. That's going to be 5 pi over 3. Next one is 11 pi over 6. And lastly, our final one that we are going to have is 12 pi over 6. 12 pi over 6 does reduce, and it's going to reduce down to, once again, something that you should be very familiar with. It's going to reduce down to 2 pi. Okay, so now what we've done is we've extended our information from just our small, simple, uh, special triangles. We've extended it to the entire collection of all of the degree va values and all of the radian values for both the 45, 45, 90, and the 30, 60, 90. So now that includes all of the tools that you now need to complete a perfect tool. Our tool is going to include uh, degree values, it's going to include radian values, and it's going to include those ordered pairs that are around the outside edge. So this has been video three of five. The next video, four of five, is going to put it all together into the perfect unit circle.